Just for Paul and Neil. Like, you me If they see me in the halls, they speak French to me, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, that's the, this, this, the relationship that we've, we've got with each other has been en français from day one, and it's, you know, it's, it's good, and they're, they, they sometimes, one of the, one of the problems with the room setup like this is, um, is that even when you don't want conversation, sometimes you've got it, but, you know, for the most part, well, that's exactly what we want, though, you, if you're in the French class, you want to learn to speak French, and they do. Teacher Moorhead says surrounding her students with a little culture and ambiance en français has made it easier for her students to remain grounded in the content language. And I tell the kids right off the bat that um, we're all learning and the only way to speak it is to speak it and the only way to learn to write it is to write it and just just practice and you're going to get better. So uh, you know, I think, I think that if the, if the example is set by the teacher then the kids are going to follow it. And that's, that's what's happened with this group, you know. It, I wouldn't answer, if they wanted to ask me a question, I would not answer it until it were, until it was uh, given to me in French. And I, they've gotten, they're okay with that now. I mean, you know, there was, there was a lot of moaning and groaning the first week of school. And, uh, you know, I just hate her, don't you? And, you know, that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, nobody's, nobody's tried to do me, do me in in the last couple of weeks. So, I, you know, I guess it's going all right. <laughs> Like adults, some high school students share an interest in politics. In Houston, Yvette Hino's French students followed the U.S. election process on the Internet, but from a European perspective. For French, the students, because we have two computers in the class and there, is, there are also various computer labs throughout the school, the students researched the candidates in the American election, but they did it in French. They went to the French sites and they saw what they had to say about George and Laura Bush, about Al Gore and Tipper Gore, and about Hillary Clinton, because she too is running for office. And what they did is they, got, they gathered the information and we had a talk show. In my class, we have a lot of talk shows. They have to be able to ask and answer questions. The students prepare questions, but they always like to invent their own on the day of the talk show. Teacher Hino also teaches Arabic to Houston area students and she mixes in a heavy dose of Arabic culture in every lesson plan. For Arabic, technology is a natural because there is something called computer assisted language learning. For Arabic, the students not only have to learn about the language but they also have to learn about the culture. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the culture, they don't understand anything about the people who speak the language. So it's very important that they learn the culture along with the language. That is why it's a culture and language class. If uh, we are going to go to strictly Arabic culture from the very beginning, then the most important country is going to be Egypt. They have to learn about Egypt and its influence. Egypt has been around for thousands of years. It's one of the oldest countries in the world. And Arabic hasn't been around for that long, but Egypt has been around. So they would have to learn about Egypt. They would have to learn about places like Syria. They would have to learn about Israel, and which, is, which was formerly called Palestine. It was, it's Israel and Palestine, for, uh, depending on the point of the view of the person you are talking to. They have to understand that the cradle of civilization was in Iraq, and uh, people don't understand. What does the word Egypt bring to your mind? Pyramids. Huh? Pyramids. Pyramids. The pyramids. Right, the pyramids. Yes. Moses. Moses. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard their music, maybe? Some of them. Arabic music? Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about their habits, their values, their customs, maybe? At Bel Air High School, a magnet school for languages in the Houston Independent School District, several classes comparing different cultures associated with the languages offered are required of all students. In Fadwa Sakar's Arabic Comparative Cultures class, students who have yet to begin learning to speak the language are already learning about practices and perspectives common to the Arab world. It's important for the students to know about, um, like in, in particularly in the Arab Arabic culture, I found so many stereotype concepts and people here get a chance to understand what they know 
and enhance the correct concepts and of course the misconception about certain aspects or the stereotypical you know ideas about people like when they come here first and I tell them sometimes I ask them what do you know about the Arabic culture the first thing that comes to mind is camels Teacher Soccer believes when teaching culture, it's important to help students look beyond their own or another society's preconceived notions. It has the most Muslims in the world. So that doesn't mean necessarily that every Muslim is an Arab. Is that true? Does that mean you will not find Christians in the Arab world? Of course you will find Muslims and you will find Jews in the Arab world. So we came up with what they know and of course uh, we put those subtopics on, on the board and we will elaborate on those during the whole course. We will be talking basically about geography, history, uh, resources, economy, politics somehow, the language, the culture, how do people perceive things and how do they practice thing, things and how do they uh, we'll go over their products like their food, their music, their um, art and entertainment things. In addition to what the people of a particular culture do, language students in the Lot classroom learn about the products of that culture or what people make or create. Yes. Un cementerio. Uh, uh, está buenísimo. Muy bien. Bueno, escriban lo que va adentro. Muy bien. ¿Y acá qué hay? A ver. La señora de. Otra. Ah, oh, ah, oh, una profesora. Ay, no es la señora Hanses. At Los Communications bien. Arts High School in San Antonio, Aurora Hansis and her Spanish 2 students are celebrating and at the same time learning about the Mexican holiday El Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Students are asked to write and then present their version of the Calaveritas, the sometimes irreverent poems associated with this holiday that are a product of the Mexican culture. La profesora no comprende por qué no hablar en español. Señora quiere hablar más en español porque no hablaron en español la muerte llegó y las llevo. Oh, muy bien, muy bien. What we saw was a process that we started with a learning scenario for this uh, Día de los Muertos. And uh, we started learning about Día de los Muertos, what it means, and some of the uh, different um, Art, well, uh, some of the art and some of the literature that accompanies this, and we chose to go with the literature to uh, represent part of the Dia de los Muertos. They have uh, calaveritas, and those are poems. They write uh, it's humoristic poems, satirical poems that are good nature about political figures, about prominent people. Se llama Nick Dauphin, es muy muy cómico. Le gusta los ejércitos aeróbicos. Nick Dauphin es listo, no es tristo. Él es muy bonito, no es consentido. Él encanta canta su abuelo penar su pelo. Nick Dauphin dorme también como un león, pero no como un león. Esta es Nick Dauphin, nuestro amigo. In the process of writing the calaveritas, first we had read um, calaveritas or these poems written by famous uh, writers. Also some uh, people from San Antonio because they are San Antonio having such a strong influence from Spanish. Aurora believes studying a cultural event like the Day of the Dead enhances language learning for all her students. Pero como es muy loco porque habla con su mono y juego su perro. Y él no comprendo, pero, pero, pero la muerte lo asuto. Culture is a main element of all the whole process because this is a cultural event. Uh, and uh, it is very important to, to strengthen that, make them uh, 
aware of the, some of them are his, of a Hispanic origin, so to be aware of their origin, to have uh, pride in what they celebrate. Siempre dice, if it's free, it's me. Y porque tenga no dinero, muerte no se aquella. Wilkinson Ensenado es torio y es muy loco. Le gusta Ensenado, pero no le gusta muerto. Muerto viene a tomar hermano Wilkinson. Hace pregunta cuánto, cuánto cuesta para tu tomar yo. And they like to do that. The, the students that have uh, Hispanic heritage want to do more. The others are a little bit afraid, but it helps them. And it increases their awareness of accepting other cultures and not making fun or laughing because it is different. Trick or treat, dulces. Carlitos, hola, estudiante, ¿cómo estás? Dulces, ándale. Tranquilos, por favor. Just across the hall at Communications Arts High School, these students in Teresa Tattersall's class are presenting skits with calaveras, or skeletons, puppets that are another product associated with the cultural observance of El Día de los Muertos. I was trying to do was um, have the students involved and exposed to the idea of calaveras and how skeletons have um, various meanings, especially with Day of the Dead, and the fact that at the same time that it's something scary, it's also meant to be something humorous. And so what I had the students do was make skeleton puppets and create a humorous dialogue behind it. I say, look, this is Halloween, which is a very European, you know, holiday that came to the United States, and, and this is Dia de los Muertos. We do graphic organizers so we can see what is real different and then what they have in common. And they seem, they don't all um, necessarily accept it, but they understand it and they respect it. I think at the end, and that's how I assess it at the end. Do they, do they know what happens on this day? Do they understand why the people do it? And then, you know, do you respect it without judging it? As we've seen, communicating involves more than just knowing the words to say and how to pronounce them. For any language to be fully understood and for a student to become truly proficient in its use, the products, practices, and perspectives of the culture associated with that language must be recognized and appreciated. Thank you for watching Learning Languages Other Than English, a Texas adventure, communication, and cultures. For more information about any of the topics discussed or to contact any of the individuals who helped in the production of this video, please contact the Languages Other Than English Center for Educator Development at their website at www.cedl.org slash LOTCED or contact LOTCED Director Lillian King Meidlinger at 1-800-476-6861 or contact the LOT unit at the Texas Education Agency at 1-512-936-2444.